if you watched the show earlier this week, you know that Frank Luntz's focus groups are never short on opinions, and tonight's very special group will undoubtedly continue that trend. Now, Frank is live in Hollywood with an ensemble cast of celebrities that are here to give their opinions on the hot-button issues of the day. Frank, look at that crowd before you. All right, I'll, uh, just one question to start. Does anybody in the crowd get mad if I use the term uh, Learjet limousine Hollywood liberals? John, first, let me do this. Let me introduce the people who are sitting behind me. First, we got Stephen Collins, star of the TV hit Seventh Heaven, legendary singer Pat Boone, Amy Brenneman, star of Private Practice, Tim Allen, star of Home Improvement and the Santa Claus, Wink Martindale, who has hosted more TV game shows than Elizabeth Taylor's had husbands. Laugh. Robin Bronk, CEO of the Creative Coalition. Stephen Weber, star of Happy Town and Wings. Jason Kyson Lee from the critically acclaimed Heroes. Fran Drescher, star of The Nanny. Robert Wolf from my personal favorite, Arliss. McCad Brooks, star of True Blood. And Rachel Lee Cook from She's All That. So tell me, you're all artists, you're all performers. Which should be a higher priority for Hollywood? Should it be artistic rights or should it be artistic responsibilities? Which is a higher priority, Tim? Uh, response, artistic responsibilities. Why? I don't know what artistic rights are, because uh, as an artist, you have no rights. That's the reason I became an artist. You do whatever you want. That's yeah. that's the idea. There are no rights. So the only thing the only thing left is you mean like rights, like rights and wrongs. Right wrong? well, that's it. There's no right and wrong in art. I mean, you can do whatever. Look, Maplethorpe. There's well, artists that just stretch every bound. There's no. Yeah, right. exactly. We, you know, we live in a country where freedom of speech, freedom of expression, is what our forefathers fought for, and so we have to, at all costs, preserve that right. So let me ask you all a question. As you look at the environment today, at the anger and frustration, we see what's going on in the Gulf. A number of Hollywood people have gone down, raised money, tried to make a difference on their first for Katrina, then the Gulf. Is it working? Does our system seem to work to you when you see the president speak and the CEO of BP speak? Are we functioning effectively as a country, or is there something pretty seriously broken? You've done a lot of stuff, Stephen, for the uh, Huffington Post. I know you're not happy. Well, it, uh, look, I, I mean, in regards to the topic that we're discussing, I, I think something that's missing in the discourse is an imaginative, imaginative approach to the information that's disseminated, and that's where art, in fact, art in education comes into play. But I would expect that Obama would be imaginative having being such a great communicator. Yeah. It's an unprecedented problem, though. I mean, it, you know, there are things that are going to happen that have never happened before. And I um, I remember meeting a, a, somebody who was in, he was a graduate student in pure math at Harvard, where I went. And I, I thought, okay, his desk is going to have piles of books. And I went into his apartment, and his desk was empty. And I said, wow, where, where are your books? He said, we're actually conceiving of things that have not been conceived of. And he said, there are very few Americans in the pure math department. He himself was, was uh, super Croatian because, you know, Americans do good at engineering, at spitting back, but to really think outside the box and solve problems that are unprecedented takes creativity. Is the system, is our system broken? You know, what's, what's interesting about what's happening now is, is 10 times and 20 times the damage that was created 20 years ago with the Exxon spill, yet uh, in the midst of so much media that's happening, the danger and, and, and the seriousness of what's happening is getting lost. And I think we're, you know, speaking about responsibility within arts, there's also responsibility within media to really educate and inform the public as they should. Is the media living up to its responsibility, yes or no? Right now, no. Show of hands, is the media living up to its responsibility when it comes to the Gulf, yes or no? Who says yes? None of you. And we're split. No, but here's the thing. The, we're split here. Half the, the, Republican. There's, there are subtleties in the argument. You know, in everyday discourse, there are certain there are subtleties that uh, things like having an art education will help you negotiate. I mean, nothing is always black and white. Let me ask this, because I'm, I'm watching, for, by the way, a group of distinguished people in Hollywood. Frank, the, the opinion of Hollywood, when you talk to people in this country, is that it is decidedly hard left. If George Bush were president, for example, during this oil spill, they'd be attacking George W. Bush. But Obama seems to get a pass. Is that perception? Is that reality? Conservatives I know in Hollywood, they say they got to stay underground, keep their opinions private. Why is, there, why is Hollywood so decidedly left? The, the question, and I'm going to paraphrase it, <clears throat> The perception is that Hollywood takes one side of the political spectrum. Is it an accurate perception? 
and if it is, why? In Hollywood, people are going to uh, be more forthright about freedom of expression and, uh, and maybe even be more critical of uh, the way perhaps the news sensationalizes the negativity and then blames Hollywood for being negatively provocative with our children when in fact I think that the negative paradigm in the world is a lot to do with the fact it, that we don't feed the public both sides. It is, is, does Hollywood tend to be on one side? Most media and Hollywood are very liberal. Well, for many good reasons, but one of the big reasons too is nobody likes to be told they can't do something. And so uh, we, in Hollywood, we don't like rules. We don't like any limits. We want to be able to express ourselves the way we choose, and particularly if it's going to make money. So to exercise responsibility for family is a, a low priority. You're nodding your head about responsibilities in Hollywood. What's your reaction to this? Well, my reaction to this is that I think that it's easy for the to be perceived that you know that Hollywood is one big liberal agenda. But I think it's entirely possible that uh, people who are liberal are just a little bit louder about it, and um, maybe they get more attention. And maybe, yeah. And I, I yeah, we're a nonpartisan group. I'm not going to say anymore. Historically, historically, artists tend to latch on to changes in society faster than the general public. That's why people turn to artists for their vision. Uh, that doesn't necessarily come down to liberal versus conservative. It's a fascinating opportunity to listen to a perspective that we don't often hear and to give them a chance to be heard because really they've got interesting points of view and it is a perspective that uh, I think is very helpful for America. Frank, I'd like to just tell them, I'd like to debate them all individually, but good to see you. Thank them all for being with us. We appreciate it. Let not your heart be troubled when we come back. Our